Arsenal. <laughs> Man City. No, I can't laugh at Man City. I'll be honest. I can't laugh at Man City. I can't laugh. Uh, Man City or Man City. Let's be honest. Look, what happened last night is one of those things that are going to happen, right? It's going to happen. You're not going to win everything every year, every time. Um, so Man City, who are defending champions of Europe, unlucky. It happens. What I will say about Man City is a few of their fans seem to have a problem with the way Real Madrid got that result. I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, if you are in that competition at that stage and you're looking to go all the way, it doesn't matter how you do it. It's just about getting it done. It's as simple as that. And Real Madrid were efficient. So don't complain. They found a way to win. It's as simple as that. And they won on pens. So fair play to Real Madrid. Absolute class um but that's man c arsenal <laughs> oh man what's um well to, to, to sum it up to sum it up um because I, I don't normally start a video like this but hello guys i hope all of you are doing well let's jump right in chelsea are still the only london club to win the champions league and long shall it remain that way indeed it will remain that way there's no London club that's going to come close to one, let alone two. Um, and look, what what is uh, what's grinding my gears a little bit, right? And why I've reacted this way is um, it, the reason why I'm finding it hilarious. It's not to wind up Arsenal fans, because there's a lot of Arsenal fans that actually see it the same way that I'm seeing it. And fair play, fair play. Um, the Arsenal Twitter page. <laughs> The Arsenal socials came out afterwards and went um, something along the lines of we can be proud of that Champions League run or something like that. I can't, I'm not going to get it up again, but something along those words that, um, that they can feel somewhat proud about going that far in the Champions League, right? Or, or their, their Champions League journey, I think what it was. <sighs> to quote The Rock, I'm not going to swear, but... Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's quoting the final boss. Are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. Come on. We respectfully. Respectfully. They played the most underperforming Bayern Munich team I think we've seen in years. Um, and a manager who's in charge that's leaving at the end of the season, that's already been confirmed and they already know that, yet somehow Bayern Munich still managed to knock Arsenal out and that's something to be proud of now. Arsenal with all the bigger fish to fry um, and, <laughs> and, and phase 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 25, 55, 864, because that's the way that it's going, and the project that's been going on for five years have absolutely nothing to show for it, and it's looking like the season's going to be the exact same thing again, out of the Champions League, out of the cup competitions, Premier League's not looking very good at the moment, not looking likely, you could end up with nothing. Realistically, if we're talking realistically, Chelsea, in its worst performing time, I think that we've seen in decades, right, are somehow going to, by results, definition of results, going to have a better season than Arsenal. How's that happened? <laughs> What's happened? Chelsea have already played a final. Chelsea are about to play another semi-final. About to play Man City in the FA Cup. Uh, yeah, we're not in Europe, but cool. Arsenal got knocked out time ago in those competitions and have made it to a quarter-final of the Champions League. Cool, are fighting for the title, but are they going to do it? Well, we'll see. It's just not looking good, bruv. <laughs> it's just not looking good. So, crazy scenes last night. Absolutely crazy scenes. Arsenal out of the Champions League in that way was just... It was, uh, to quote... And this goes to Real Madrid as well, beating Man City and knocking them out. Um, because respectfully, look, like I said at the start, to, to win the treble two times in a row has never been done and it never will. So this is how I came to the conclusion that I think Man City are going to be heading out at some point because it's just, it's, it's borderline impossible. There's a reason why it's never happened. <laughs> so, you know, um, there's that. But you can respect Man City because... It's expected. It's expected maybe to lose to Real Madrid. That's not the worst thing in the world, for sure. Whereas Arsenal, um, to quote, like I was going to say, a legend, 
This is football heritage. Let's jump into the Chelsea news. <laughs> and you know what? You know what's crazy? You know what's great? Oh, by the way, um, Arsenal, thanks, you've not actually helped us. In fact, you've, you've, you've ruined any chances that we've had of actually getting to Europe. So if you want to laugh at something, you can laugh at that. But again, like I said to Barcelona, what's the point of us getting into Europe if we're not going to win it, just like you guys and just like Barcelona? No, none of us are winning anything. It's as simple as that. So we're all in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> but the coefficient has basically gone to Germany. Um, England will not be playing with five Champions League teams next season because an English team just got knocked out by a German team. I think that done enough damage. And now Man City are out, so that's not helped. Uh, uh, Liverpool will see tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if Liverpool won 4-0 away from home. I just wouldn't. But they're, they're heading out of the Europa League. And we got a hope on West Ham to get passed by Leverkusen. It's not going to happen, so we're screwed. In terms of the coefficient, we're screwed. Which means that Chelsea need to get minimum, minimum, minimum seventh, I think, to get Conference League. Sixth to get Europa League. He's not looking good, bruv. But in a time where we have Man City knocked out, Arsenal knocked out, Liverpool heading out, no English teams left in Europe, basically. I think all bar Aston Villa, I think, in the Conference League. But all the English teams are gone. At the same time, basically, and we get told this. Let's jump right into it. Chelsea are monitoring Jamal Musiala as Man City plan a big push to sign him this summer. Finally, 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 finally. We're getting linked with proper ballers again. It only took what? Actually, no, you know what? Let me put this on for this because I think it's only right. It only took two years. <laughs> you flipping slow turtles. You know, like, ugh, crazy. But, 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 but. I'm afraid I've got to bring um, everything to a very abrupt halt. Because once I saw this, I was like, oh my God, we are linked with an actual, actual proper footballer of a certain caliber. Jamal Musiala. Yes, please. And he's from Cobham. In fact... Um, let's let's show you. Let's show you. This is him. Look at that. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right? That's when he was playing at Chelsea. Uh, he's not there anymore, obviously. But killing it. Well, just as we heard that news, and we know Man City are going to be pushing for him, but Bayern Munich sources have come out and told us this to absolutely just end every single little bit of hope any of us had. Bayern Munich have ruled out selling Jamal Musiala this summer. He is the face of the club's future. <sighs> All right, back to 16 and 17-year-old kids it is then. Um, <laughs> now, actually talking about that, let's jump into uh, what striker apparently we're getting linked with. Well, here it is. Benjamin Sesko's representatives have been guests at Chelsea this season and the club have been tracking him. 42.7 million release clause. <sighs> I'll be honest. I'll be honest. If we're going for Sesco, we might as well just go all in on Nicholas Jackson. That's just my analysis. Uh, I, I don't see the point. I don't see the point. Um, I understand that he wouldn't cost too much. His salary will be all right. But I honestly just want to look at Sesco play. He's not, he's not a bad player. But I'm done with experiments. He's just an experiment waiting to happen. Anyone have actual any assurances that Sesco is going to come in and kill it? Can you look at Sesco and go, yes, easy, easy. No, you can't. You can't. And even if you think you can, you know you can't. <laughs> You're probably going to look and go, yeah, I reckon, I think, yeah, he kind of, I think he looks like it. Mm. But you ain't sure. Chelsea needs sure. Chelsea needs certainty. Chelsea needs someone. That we look at and go, yes, yes, no doubts, no doubts. Stick him in the front line, there's no doubts. Don't even need to look. Yeah, he's on the score sheet, isn't he? That's the sort of striker Chelsea need at the moment. We're screaming for it. We've, we've been screaming for it for a few years, to be honest. <laughs> it's just not gone well. Um, but that's what Chelsea need. No more experiments. We need certainty. Some people are not certain on Ossiman. Personally, I think that's the closest we're going to get. Certainty would be Erling Haaland. 
at its absolute peak. Like you look at Harlem and go, yes. You know, certainty, um, some would say Ivan Tony, some would say those sort of guys to an extent. Some would then bring up players like Ollie Watkins and those sort of players that are actually good strikers, don't get me wrong. But Sesco, uh, you know, I reckon there'll be some people that will advocate for Solanke and have more of a point with Solanke than actually going in for Sesco. Now, that's going to sound wild to some of you, but I reckon some of you will understand that. So let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Now, let's move to other matters in the Chelsea team. Conor Gallagher. Newcastle United scouts have been present at recent Chelsea games as football's top talent spotters carefully monitor the intriguing situation around Conor Gallagher. West Ham and Tottenham are also interested. Well, in that case, I think we might get a bidding war. <laughs> um, and to be honest, look, this is actually good news for Chelsea. Because, look, is Gallagher leaving? Of course he is. Anyone, if anyone's actually looking and going, look, we can't sell Gallagher, we're not going to sell Gallagher, don't do it. Personally, I wouldn't sell Gallagher, but he's being sold. Or, or, or he takes the initiative and sees out the end of his contract. But that depends on Pochettino staying, which I'm going to come to later on. So that's, uh, yeah, a weird scenario. But Newcastle interested, West Ham interested, Tottenham interested, cool. Because then it means that clubs are going to come in and if that's the case and there's more than one, then we're in a good place. I'll be honest, it might actually get Connor to consider. I reckon if Newcastle come in, he might actually even go, you know what, I'll move. West Ham and Tottenham though, I don't think he'll move. Newcastle, I think. The other two, I don't think. But that's that. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Let's check the latest on Pot, like I said earlier on. From David Ornstein saying, I don't expect any firm conclusion to be reached until the season is over. Chelsea season has fallen short of expectations of everyone involved, so it's time to step up. There's a strong argument after all the changes. Chelsea need continuity and Pochettino deserves time. He will be judged by the performances he gets out of the players and also results. I'm going to be honest. If that's the case, then he's already failed. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Do you know what I mean? David Ornstein came out and said within this same quote, um, which leads me to believe that he is just a mouthpiece for the ownership, that Chelsea's owners, even the owners, are even analysing themselves and realising that they're not going to have any excuses. They need to deliver. Everyone at the club needs to deliver, including them. Well, duh. But the truth is, have we delivered? Have we done anything over the past two years? Have things been heading in the right direction? No. So what are we talking about? We're bluffing. <laughs> We're bluffing. Show us something of substance and then we'll know, oh, you know what? Maybe they are acting a bit serious now. Cool. As it's been, nah. As it's been, they've tried to put some muscle, some, some muscle behind the money, right? Flex a little bit of that muscle. Try and make it look like they're spending big and they're going crazy and all of that. And we all got duped. When in reality, we didn't actually get the complete quality that the squad needs in order to compete. We just didn't do that and we blew a billion. Then we hire complete novices and mediocrity from across the, across the board to conduct the show. It's just, it's what it is, and that's where we're in at the moment. And unfortunately, Pochettino is part of that. He's part of that. But when it comes to Pochettino and the end of the season, I've got to be honest. I've got a feeling Pochettino's going to stay. At first, I was like, yo, Deserbi's, Deserbi's, Deserbi. And it might still be Deserbi, but uh, it just sounds like it's all gone cold. And it just looks like it's all pointing to the club wanting to keep Pochettino. Ah, uh, look. The, I have to be honest. The one flip side is I know people are going to make the argument and go, well, who's available? Who's available? Who can we get? in a market where there's actually loads of managers available, but in terms of someone who's young, dynamic, up and coming, uh, someone like a Xabi Alonso that you look at and go, oh, you know what, he might be it. There's really no one else. I have to say, I think that, I think, I'll be honest here, I think the levels of managers has, has plummeted. 
the levels that managers have, I think, has, has collapsed. Uh, I, I don't. I find it mind-boggling how um, the caliber of managers everywhere has just deteriorated. Before, you used to be able to select multiple managers as yeah, world class. Now, Pep and Klopp, Ancelotti, done. Who else is world class? Who are we talking about that's world class? Now, you can bring other names into this conversation, but I mean active managers right now that are still at the peak of their game. So is free. <laughs> that's it. You know? Some people would say, and for me, correctly so, Jose Mourinho, he's out of a job. I'm talking about active. Thomas Tuchel, he's leaving Bayern Munich at the end of the season. He's had his struggles, right? So I know some people wouldn't put him in that bracket, but I think he's a world-class manager. So you get the gist. But who else is there? Pep, Klopp and Ancelotti. World class. No one. Whereas before, pff, it was endless. It was endless. So the levels have, do have dropped. It, it, it's hard. It's harder now to be able to look at managers and go, yo, that one is special. You just, you can't. It's just, yeah, he looks all right. Maybe. Don't know. It, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. The managerial market, for me, I think, at, in terms of stocks, is at its lowest. Even though there's more managers to talk about and more managers available, it's weird, weird dynamic. But in terms of managers available, yeah, Thomas Tuchel is available at the end of the season. We're not going to get him. Um, Mourinho is available now if we wanted him. We're not going to get him. Um, Nagelsmann, um, it, it, we know that there's big conversation about him going back to Bayern Munich. Why don't Chelsea try and intervene and actually correct their wrong when they tried to go for him the first time? No, that's not going to happen. So you see what I mean? All these things can, shows us there are managers, but now... We want to keep Poch. <laughs> or we're going to go for a Deserby. Or we're going to go for, you know, maybe Thomas Frank, perhaps. Maybe we, or Eddie Howe. You know, we're going to go for them. It's just it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. So there's that. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think is happening in, at the end of the season? What do you think will happen? Do you think Poch stays? What do you think he goes? And who do you think will come in if that's the case? Let me know down below. Much appreciated. Now, before we wrap up, a couple of other things. Firstly, some clarity from Fabrizio. Kylian Mbappe's future is settled and his decision is made. There are no doubts. The player will join Real Madrid. It's done. It's done, people. It's done. We, can we stop talking about Mbappe? He's going to Madrid. It's pretty obvious. If you don't know that, then I'm sorry. Go back to the cave that you decided to peek your head out of. Because <laughs> clearly, you've not heard anything. So you might as well just stay ignorant to the situation. So that's that. Mbappe, we'll see when he ends up signing for Real Madrid this summer. Going to be a good one. Now, FA Cup replays have been scrapped. Check this out. They will no longer take place from the first round onwards. On top of that, we've had this. The mid-season break is to be removed from the calendar to allow for a mid-August start date for the Premier League. The new agreement between the FA and the Premier League will last for at least six years. I'm sorry, am I missing something here? The Premier League already starts in mid-August. How do I know that? Because my birthday is mid-August and it always conflicts with a match day. <laughs> Match day number one, basically on my birthday. Uh, this is no. Why get rid of the mid-season break just to allow a mid-August start date? It's always been a mid-August start date. Actually, no, not always. It's been a late-August start date. Up until the last few years, we've had a mid-August start date. It's been like that for a while. So this is a whole load of nothing. But in terms of the FA Cup replay, I'll be honest. I've got to be clear here. For us... Supporters of big clubs, all the big clubs, it's a great thing. Fantastic. But I've got to be real. For the smaller teams, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Because for them, they rely on that extra income. If they're able to get a replay, I'll give you an example. If, um, if Yeovil Town, right? Or no, D Dagenham and Redbridge, right? Dagenham and Redbridge um, draw nil-nil to Liverpool at Anfield. Yeah? Mad. No one would have expected that. And then they got to take it back to their home ground. That's extra income for Dagenham and Redbridge. Big income, actually. Massive eyes. Do you know what I mean? For them, that's a big deal. You're taking that away. Um, if this is going to be the case, and I think there needs to be a bit more of an equal share in terms of the, the gates, perhaps, in terms of 
revenue generated from the game I don't know but yeah it's not going to help the smaller clubs I'll be honest but it helps the bigger clubs just in terms of schedule in terms of schedule less games because we've got there's a club world cup there's an expanded Champions League. All the European competitions are, are flipping, expanding and whatnot. It's going to be more game time. So if there's less replays, it means that there's going to be less games in case a draw were to happen. It goes to extra time and penalties on the spot. So for the bigger clubs, great. For the smaller clubs, yeah, not so great. So yeah, I'm torn. Personally, I'm torn because I do want less games. Overall, I do want less games. Um, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite about that. I'm going to be real. But yeah, if I was a small, if I was a, if I was a fan of a smaller club, I'd be peed off. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy. So I hear it. I hear it. What do you think? Let me know down below. Much appreciated. And I will see you tomorrow. Cause tomorrow, tomorrow, then this is where we get to end with uh, <laughs> a few laughs. <laughs> Man City, we're playing them on Saturday. FA Cup semi-final. Well, preview for that will be tomorrow. So hit the subscribe button. And why I'm laughing is because, well, they played yesterday. They went 120 minutes. Them and Real Madrid basically had no more legs to run on. They, they, they were dead. They were absolutely dead. They were finished. Hence, some of the penalties were atrocious. But they were finished. They could not run anymore. They couldn't even stand. Cramps left, right and centre. Well, now you've got to play us at Wembley on Saturday, just after two days rest. Listen, Chelsea, big opportunity. I'll get into all this in the preview. Um, I shouldn't act too cocky because it is still Manchester City and I think we can still get battered. But I reckon we might show up. So let me know your thoughts. Much appreciated. Be here tomorrow for the preview. Man City versus Chelsea. FA Cup semi-final. Be there tomorrow. I'll see all of you then. Thank you all so much for watching, people. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Take care and peace. And Arsenal. <laughs> peace.